Hello everybody, Ollie here. It's been another exciting month on the channel as we inch ever closer to 100,000 subscribers. Let's have a look at some of the comments you've been leaving. I did an episode on uh, Donald Trump and the problem with politics, which uh, recent events might cause you to go back and rewatch and re-examine, but uh, one of the big comments I got was uh, that in the USA they apparently use the word liberalism differently from the way we use it in the UK, and, and this kind of ties into something with that episode that I didn't go into how you define the left wing and the right wing, which is absolutely fair enough, I didn't do that. There are lots of different ways of trying to do it, and some of them get very complicated, and I thought that might just bog me down, but that was definitely something that was like missing from the episode. Apparently in the USA, uh, liberal means left wing, whereas here in the UK it doesn't always. I mean, some people say I am liberal and therefore left of the right wing, but I know people on the left wing who will, will get upset if you call them liberals and they'll go, no, I'm not liberal, I'm left. Like, liberals are the people in the centre. So it kind of ties into the fact that the left wing and right wing is, is pretty relative. Like, I know people who are right of me, but who are left of other people that I know. So it, it all gets a little bit complicated, which is part of the reason I didn't go into it. So yeah, terminology. It's tricky, man. I'm deliberately not going to show any of them, but there were quite a few Islamophobic comments underneath that episode. People talking about supposed links between Islam and terrorism. There's a book I really, really want to recommend. It's very good. It's called What Terrorists Want by Professor Louise Richardson. The title pretty much tells you what it's about. It's about terrorism. Louise Richardson, uh, as well as being quite a lovely lady, is also a world expert on terrorism. She's interviewed a lot of terrorists. She's studied it extensively. She talks about the causes of it, where it comes from. There is a chapter on how religion plays into it, but it is very different from what you might think, having only looked at media reports about terrorism. Uh, she doesn't so much go into the way that the category of terrorist is constructed and portrayed, that's something that more of a media studies professor would be able to tell you, but if you are interested in the real political causes of terrorism, then that is definitely one to pick up. I'll include a link to it in the description actually, and if you use that link to buy it, then I will get a percentage of the sale. So, there you go. Emily Fishy asked what power is, since we talked about power a fair bit in that episode. Uh, this is something I'm going to be touching on a little bit more in my episode on anarchism, which is going to be released at some point in the next few months. It's filmed and it's edited and it's going to be coming out at some point, uh, so just hold hold your fire until then. Hold hold your powder, hold your horses, uh, hold, your pi hold your fire, your power and your horses, hold everything you've got and just hang on. Uh, because we're going to be talking about power in that episode and it's going to be a lot of fun. Alan Bartlett asked, how can things like economic policy and environmental policy be linked to identity politics and issues of like race and gender and stuff? Well, in a huge, huge way, man, because uh, the worst effects of things like environmental and economic damage are often borne by people who don't share the identity of those in power. So, uh, case in point, the Dakota Access Pipeline, have you seen this in, in the news in the US? There's this oil pipeline that is being routed through uh, First Nation land, and there's a big protest about it, and the protesters are being forced at gunpoint by riot police to accept that this is where the pipeline is going to be. The pipeline was only routed through there because Elsewhere in North Dakota, the, the predominantly white residents of that area refused to have the pipeline through their backyard, and they were not forced at gunpoint to accept it, whereas the First Nation people are. Uh, and uh, another case in point, um, Haiti. Haiti recently had that massive uh, hurricane which killed several people. Their ability to deal with that would have been a lot greater had France paid them reparations. So you see how things like race and history and identity definitely do tie into things like economic and environmental policy. A few people said that the left wing is just as critical of cishet white guys as the right wing is critical of their minority du jour. Um, I'm not really sure that's true, but also uh, I, I do appreciate that there is criticism of cishet white guys from the left, all of the criticism of it I've seen has been of us insofar as we are bearers of privilege and refuse to dismantle the systems that grant us that privilege. Like, we just ignore it, or we deny it, um, we don't look, the, don't look the facts in the face. And I, I think that that means that what I said about the friend-enemy distinction and the different ways the left and the right wing use it, the stuff I talked about in, in the last video, that would all still be true. So, 
yeah, I see what you're saying, but remember what I said in the video about the different ways that people use that distinction. There were a lot of comments in the last month on, on loads of videos about my looks, and all of them very, very positive, uh, which is nice. Um, did I suddenly get hot and no one told me? Because this is not something I'm used to. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks to everyone who's been who's been saying all of that stuff. Maybe it's just because I'm at drama school and everybody at drama school is absolutely beautiful inside and out. Oh, hey, speaking of beautiful people, thank you to everyone who supported the show on Patreon this month. Thank you to all these names who are my top patrons and to everyone else who donated. If you don't know, then the show is crowdfunded. This flat that I'm sitting in is actually partially crowdfunded by the fans, which is amazing. Thing. So thank you to everyone who uh, keeps me alive, basically. Uh, remember that even one dollar a month can help, so thanks. So then I did a video about war and remembrance and why we remember war and have remembrance ceremonies and so on. I know we've had two political episodes in a row this month, that's just because November was a very political month, so don't worry, next week we'll go back and do something lighter. I know I could definitely use it. Thank you to everyone who pointed out that in Canada they do in fact have Remembrance Day, not Veterans Day, that was my mistake, I misspoke. Thank you to the literally dozens of people who made sure that I was right on that, thank you. We talked about how in the UK a lot of people wear red poppies, but a very small number of people wear white poppies, and that that can sometimes be quite a controversial move. And Greg Gautier said he can kind of understand why wearing a white poppy might make you upset if you wear a red one, because it's like the person wearing a white one is accusing you of being a warmonger because you're not wearing the white peace poppy. Well, for me, the white poppy isn't so much about criticising the people who wear red poppies per se. Like, I, I don't have a problem if people wear red poppies. And I think if you're wearing a white one and using that as an excuse to police how other people aesthetically display their relationship to nationalism, then you've, you've kind of missed the point, in my opinion. Anyway, for me, wearing the white poppy is an invitation to be a little bit more curious and critical about the ways that militarism and our relationship to the military forms part of our national identity, and, and the way that we remember military history can be used for political goals. That's what it is for me. It's, it's very much not about the people. Like, if everyone in the UK says, like, okay, we wear white poppies now, then that, and, but the foreign policy didn't change and the understanding of peace and war didn't change, then it kind of, we'd need another one, we'd need a new one, we'd need a transparent poppy or something, I don't know. I had quite a nice conversation with a guy on the tube on Friday, actually, about the white poppy. He clocked that I was wearing one and uh, he, his son was with him and he said, um, excuse me, I hope you don't mind, but my son just asked me what the white poppy is and I didn't know, so could you, could you tell us? Um, and we had a really, really nice conversation about it. He was a really nice guy and, uh, the way I explained it to him was like, well, look, we've had the red poppies for, like, what, 70, 80 years now? But we keep having wars, and we keep being massive arms exporters, so either the red poppies don't work to create peace, or the red poppies do work, but they're not really about creating peace. And I was like, that's, that's the kind of invitation that... I'm exploring and I'm working within the realms of at the moment. So that was a really nice conversation. Um, I think the kid who was with him might be watching the show because I heard you say something about YouTube. Uh, so, hi, your dad's really nice. Leonardo Calente asks, have I seen Black Mirror? I'm partway through season three at the moment and I am very much enjoying it. Uh, I do agree with Film Crit Hulk's essay on it in that sometimes it defaults to the male view a bit too much, but it's kind of, for me, a relatively minor quibble. Uh, I am enjoying it, and uh, yeah, it's scary. You can't watch more than like two episodes of Black Mirror in a row. Like, it's not something you can really binge, because it just gets you really down. While I've got you here, this might be the last comment reply video of 2016. I, I'm not sure, because the scheduling is a bit the but um, I'm going away in December. The show will keep going, and I've got a really fun Christmas episode planned, but uh, I will be in New Zealand for most of December, so I might not be able to film a comment reply video for that until I get back. Uh, so if you see somebody who looks like me wandering around New Zealand in December or January, then that is me. Do come up and say hello. I will probably have a horrible beard because I'm not taking any razor blades with me. I'm considering growing a Doctor Strange beard. My girlfriend is against the idea, but I'm, I'm, I'm tempted. What do you think? Hmm? Those are all the comments I've got time for. Thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>